Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop and welcome to episode 8 of my Ask Matt series where I answer questions suggested by you, the viewer. Today we're going to be talking about sharpening again. On episode 2 I talked about my sharpening process in my shop which is more just maintaining the edge and not actually getting to a dull chisel first before sharpening it. Now Travis asked me how I would go about sharpening a totally dull chisel and in fact one that's so dull that I have to go to the grinder first before actually hitting it with the stones. So today I'm going to show you how I would go about doing that. But before we do that, I need a dull chisel. And a dull chisel is something that's pretty hard to come by here in my shop. So let's make this dull. And actually it's not too dull right now. Not that dull. So let's make this dull. Should be fun. Don't try it at home. <laughs> Alright, let's see if we can chop through this eight penny nail. Not so much, huh? Ooh. Yeah, there's the edge. This should be interesting. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> how are you guys supposed to do this? Is it this way? How do you people do this? <laughs> I don't think this is the most effective way to open a paint can. Unless this chisel is too big for this. Alright, I give up. That's good enough. That's a pretty messed up edge. All right, so that was pretty interesting. <laughs> uh, so let's get going on restoring this thing back to its once sharp state. And the first thing I'm gonna do is remove all that material on the edge that is extremely damaged and broken off so I have a nice straight edge again. You can see right now it's really bumpy, it's jagged, it's all over the place. So we need to use the grinder to remove all that material. Now, theoretically, you could remove this just with your stones or some other method. The grinder is going to be really fast and will allow us to get to the stones faster and kind of get to the process pretty quick. I'm going to be using my slow speed grinder for this. You can use a high speed grinder as well. With the high speed grinder, you seem to be a lot more um, careful that you don't overheat the tool as you're sharpening it. I'm going to keep my little bath of water here right by the grinder as I'm grinding. That way, as I go, I can dip the tool in the water to cool it off. Okay, so I'm going to adjust my tool rest so that the chisel is approaching the wheel at the same angle that it's already ground to. I'm just going to do that by eye here. And it's actually pretty easy to do. Now one of the things to be concerned about when grinding a chisel is that you want to keep the chisel nice and square to the wheel. Now one way to do that would be to clamp a guide block to the side that's nice and square to that wheel and all you have to worry about is riding that chisel along the block. The other thing you can do is if you have a longer one you can clamp a block along the back here and that will keep it nice and square. What I'm going to do is freehand it and I'm going to use my finger as a little clamping block on the bottom to help keep that square. Um, the nice thing here is I don't have a chisel wider than my wheel so I don't have to really worry about moving it back and forth too much. I can really just apply pressure straight in and be good. So that's what I'm going to do next. Let's get the safety glasses and plug this thing in and start grinding. One tip is to keep a bead of water on the edge of the chisel. When you see the water start to boil, it's time to cool the chisel again. All right, so we got our chisel all nicely ground and we're ready to start our honing, or I guess a little more actual sharpening. You can see that that grind is on there. It's really, really rough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little marker on here so you can see a lot better where the material is gonna be being removed. 
Now when I set this up, hopefully, I'm only going to be removing material towards the tip because I don't really want to polish this whole, this whole area here. So I'm using my honing guide for this and I'm going to set my, my uh, protrusion using my little setup gauge here. So that's pretty easy. I'm just going to set this in the jig and just kind of tighten it up a little bit. And then using my little guide block here, I can just rest the chisel on here and push it forward until it meets the stop there and I can lock it in place. So the first stone I'm going to use here is my combination stone and I'm going to use my 800 grit side. So all I'm doing here is I'm resting it down on the stone and I'm using my, my middle finger and my index fingers to apply even pressure downward so I'm not rocking it left or right it's going to be flat down on the stone. And then I'll just start moving back and forth. Now I'll take a look. Looks like I set it up right. You can see that the, the marker line is being removed from the tip, which is what we want because we want to be, we only want to be concerned with the area down there that's actually doing the cutting. So I'll keep running this on the stone until I get a nice straight edge across there. I can tell that my grinding wasn't perfect, so I'm a little off square here, and this jig will help me square back up again anyway. So I'll just keep going. As you go here, you can see I'm moving the chisel around, trying to use as much of the stone as possible. I'm going to turn the stone around so I can use a little bit of this side. A little more water. So now if I take a look at the chisel itself, I can see the stone has been working along the edge here, the front, the cutting edge, and a little bit up in here. And there's a little bit right there on the corner there that needs to be uh, worked back towards. This is still back further. So I'll keep going on the stone a little bit until I have this front edge totally smooth and, and shiny matching this over here. And that looks good. Now it's polished all the way along the whole edge. And while I'm at the stone, I'll also just knock off the burr that's on the back of the chisel right now. And I can feel it. To do that's pretty easy too. I'm just going to take it with the jig hanging up back here and I'm just going to run it back and forth a few times just to knock off that burr, clean up the back. Alright, I'm just going to wipe the stone off a little bit and I'll flip it over. And we'll go to our 4000 grit. Same thing all over again. I can see here that the stone is working. You can kind of see it on here on the camera for real. You can see the stone is working this area through here and through here, which means that my when I was doing my grinding, I put a little bit of a, a, con a convex shape to the chisel. That's probably because I use this for sharpening my gouges and I didn't trip the stone before I did this. So there is a little bit of a convex shape to the chisel which is fine. We're working it out here but you can see I'm not quite down to the cutting edge yet so I need to keep working the stone here. And what I'll do as well, I just flatten this before I put it away but I also mentioned that the flatten is really easy. Just take, in my case I'm using a diamond plate, let's get that wet. Flip the stone over, now let's rub the stone on the diamond plate to flatten it. You can see on my stone here I still have this kind of this area here which looks to be a low spot so I just need to keep on rubbing the stones here. Isn't this fun? There we go. That's a little better. All right, back to sharpening. See, I'm getting closer. I'm almost to the line here, but I still have to keep going on over here on the edge. 
around the corner here, and then along the edge right here. So let's keep going. All right, so now I'm getting closer here. I'm touching over here and over here, and I have a little bit to go on this side, and then over here in the corner still. So just keep on keeping on. Okay, so now the edges, the whole face is really just pretty much totally polished. It just happened to work out that way. It doesn't need to be totally polished up here, but now I'm gonna start working on the micro bevel, which is the most important part of the tool. That's gonna be the cutting edge. And to get that, I'm just gonna loosen the tool and the jig and just slide it back just a little bit and then lock it back down. Now I also want to flatten the stone here before I do this because this is going to be the most critical part of the entire chisel, that cutting edge, and you want that to be nice and straight. So I'm going to make sure that this is nice and flat. We're not going to be doing a whole lot of, of polishing here anyway, so it's just really just to clean it up, make sure we don't have any imperfection in the stone. And then I can start honing again. Okay, now with that 4,000 grit stone out of the way, I'll move on to my 8,000 grit. Same thing. So now you can see I do have a nice polished edge right along the cutting edge there. And you can see I still have that, I have that, con that convexity to the chisel because of how I ground it, which is fine, it doesn't matter. So with that, I can just take this bar off the back. So this thing is back to a workable state again. Hooray! Sorry, Chisel. That was kind of a rough day for you, huh? Boom. <laughs> nice and sharp again. So that's how I would bring back a totally dull chisel into something that's sharp and usable again. Now it was really fun to actually take the chisel and beat it up and bring it back to this state, which is a nice usable sharp state. Nice and sharp, cuts paper no problem, it passes that test. Now before I actually use it, I'd probably go ahead and I'll still use my strop and give it a few stroppings just to really polish that edge up a little more and get it totally ready. But as it is now, it's totally usable, which is really awesome because about 10 minutes, 15 minutes ago, it was totally screwed up and not usable at all. So if you'd like to learn more about any of the products I use today, I'll leave links to all these things in the description down below. Those links are affiliate links, so if you head over there and you buy anything, that helps out the channel and I greatly appreciate that. If you have any ideas for any future Ask Mats, please leave those in the comments as well. I greatly appreciate any, um, any suggestions you might have. Um, even if it's not something that I typically do or you don't think it's something I typically do, like sharpening a dull chisel, that's something I really never do. And in fact, I've never sharpened a totally dull chisel like this, except for when I sharpened my beater chisels a couple of years ago, which I had previously used as ice chippers. And they were pretty far gone. <laughs> so thank you as always for watching, I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I appreciate those and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, happy woodworking.